Have you gone to the beach and built the coolest sandcastle ever? How many times have you wandered off and come back only to find your awesome creation destroyed? The water was so far away when you started building it. What happened? The culprit was the tide. Tides are the daily rising and falling of the ocean. If you just sat at the beach and stared at the ocean all day and all night, you would notice that the edge of the water would creep higher up the beach for several hours and then fall back down again after several more hours, repeating this pattern over and over. So weird. So why does this happen? Well, tides are actually caused by the same force that keeps us all from floating up into space, gravity. Except this gravity comes mostly from the moon, and the sun too, a little, pulling on the earth. Though the moon is much smaller than the earth, being only about one one hundredth the size, it has a lot of pull because of how close it is to us. Unlike land, the oceans are fluid, and so the water can actually be moved by the force of the moon's gravity. Fortunately, the moon's gravity pull isn't strong enough to pull the water completely off the surface of the planet. A good thing for us, despite how cool it would be to see whales swimming around in space. When the water is at its peak height, this is high tide. Bye-bye sandcastle. High tide occurs when the gravity from the moon attracts water towards it, causing a bulge of water on one side of the planet, while the rotation of the earth and the moon about one another causes another bulge on the opposite side. Low tide happens as the Earth rotates relative to the Moon, and the place where you are standing moves away from the bulge. If you pay attention to what the Moon is doing in the sky, you may have noticed that it rises later each day than the day before. This is because the Moon orbits in the same direction as the Earth spins on its axis. The result is that while it takes 24 hours for the Earth to rotate relative to the Sun, it takes more than 24 hours for the Earth to rotate relative to the Moon about 24 hours and 50 minutes near the equator. Since the tides depend on the moon's gravitational pull, one tide cycle, or the time it takes to go from high to high, or low to low tide, takes half that, about 12 hours and 25 minutes. The time it takes the Earth to rotate so that the place where you are standing on the beach goes from facing the moon to facing away from the moon. Therefore, it takes half of that time, or six hours and 12-ish minute, to go from low to high tide and wipe out your sandcastle. The difference in water height during high and low tide is called the tidal range. If you're playing on a beach in Florida, there is usually a difference of just a few feet in between the tides. The lowest difference between tides is about three feet or one meter. In a bunch of places though, there is a really big difference between the height of the water at high and low tides. The most extreme example is in the Bay of Fundy. This area is known to have a difference of over 53 feet or 16 meters between tides. That's like covering and uncovering a five-story building with water every six hours. Because tides are so different in different parts of the world, we need a tidal gauge, an instrument that measures the water level over time. To measure the tides over long enough periods of time that we can learn to predict the tides. Why is there so much of a difference between tidal ranges in different areas? Both Florida and the Bay of Fundy are in the same Atlantic Ocean, right? Well, okay, there are actually a lot of factors that determine both the timing of the tide cycle and the tidal range of an area, like the friction between the water and the ocean floor as the Earth rotates underneath the ocean's tidal bulges, and the shape of the coastline and the depth of the water near the coastline. That's why some places have two high tides and two low tides every day with an equal tidal range in between, this is called a semi-diurnal tide, and other places have only one high tide and one low tide a day, known as a diurnal tide, and still other places have one or more high or low tides with unequal tidal ranges for each. These are called mixed tides. Remember how I said the sun also has a bit of a role to play in this whole tide thing? Not only do tides operate on a daily scale, but differences in height also occur on a monthly scale too being dependent on what phase the moon is in and its position in relation to the sun. The highest of the high tides is called a spring tide, as in spring forth or burst forth, not as the season. Spring tides occur when the earth, moon, and sun are lined up in a row, which happens every two weeks or so during either a full or a new moon. Neap tides take place when the moon and the sun are at 90 degree angles to each other during a quarter or three quarter moon. 
The ocean water is pulled in two different directions when the sun and moon are in these positions, so the tides aren't as extreme. Whew, we've learned a lot. We've learned what creates the tides, what different ones are called, and how to predict them. Who knew all of these celestial bodies and gravitational forces were coming together just to wipe out your sandcastle? Besides affecting your beach day, tides actually impact a lot of our daily lives, from navigating ships, to building bridges, to surfing, and much more. With so much of our lives dependent on the ocean, monitoring this awesome phenomenon is really important and is something you can help do. The next time you go to the beach, try looking up the tides predicted for that beach on that day and see if you can predict when your construction project will be wiped out by the rising tide. Thank you.